Good evening. Please join us singing our opening song found in your program, Were You There? So we pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. We bow our heads in prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, grant us to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's passion, that we may merit to receive your pardon. And through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The streets of Jerusalem are abuzz with thousands of pilgrims and tourists present for the high, holy days of Passover. Talk flows as usual at these events about how the Messiah will soon come to destroy the power of Rome and restore the independence and autonomy of Israel. Down a narrow street, soldiers are shouting and using the shafts of their spears to push against a milling crowd. A visitor sees a man stumbling past behind the burly soldier who pulls the rope tied securely to the man's wrists. Another carries the rough but slotted piece of timber which everyone knows will be used for a deadly purpose. They file through the massive gates of the ancient city and come to an ominous looking hill. 
the scene of many brutal executions for those who have earned the wrath of Rome. It was a slow and painful death, a public death, meant to be a warning to those who dare oppose the authority of Caesar. Already two unfortunate men hang stripped, stretched, tied, and nailed to the crossbars. Another post stands ready for its victim to complete the trio. A mallet drives the spike through the left wrist of Jesus and then his right. Amazingly, no sound escapes his lips. The crossbar is hoisted and drops into the matching slot of the upright post. Jesus dangles in pain as his feet are aligned together and another spike goes through both. Pinned to the post now, red blood drips from his crown of thorns and pain surges through his extremities. Looking down at those who put him there, his eyes still clear and knowing speak two messages, one of pain and the other of love. And he prays aloud, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. O oh Lord Jesus, how generous you are, how merciful and kind. You who have been scourged, spit upon, crowned with thorns, nailed to the cross, and who now are dying in agony. You look down from your cross at those who put you there, including us by our sins, and yet you pray for us. Father, forgive them. Your prayer extends through time and intercedes for us. You prayed that the Father will forgive us for our neglect of the people in our lives, for our lack of compassion, for our lack of forgiveness of others, for our sins against our neighbor, whereby we crucify you once more on the cruel cross of Calvary. O oh Lord, we do not realize your perfect love for us and the perfect love of your Father. If we knew of his love, how could we sin? If we knew the pain and rejection you feel in our sins, how could we ever go against you? Even though you have told us again and again we fail to realize that it is you whom we hurt and neglect when we hurt and neglect our neighbor. O oh, Jesus, forgive us. We know not what we do. Oh. 
give them they do not understand they do not understand what they The criminal crucified to his left spits out, Are you not the Messiah? Then save yourself and us as well. The one to his right rebukes the partner, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly for the sentence we, re we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then in a halting voice, the words come forth. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And the Lord replies, Amen, I say to you. This very day, you will be with me in paradise. O oh, divine Jesus, even in your final agony, hanging by the nails in your wrists and feet, bloody and scourged, even in the mind-searing pain of your last moment in this life, you raised your head in compassion, in love, and in communion, with a thief hanging next to you. He also suffers greatly, but he sees his guilt, and he sees your innocence. He believes in you, even though most of your closest followers have now fled in doubt and fear. He asks you to remember him when you come into your kingdom, and with your gentleness and with your love, you look into his eyes 
and give him what he needs most in his final agony. You give him hope. O oh, Jesus, look upon us with the same compassion you had for the good thief. See our suffering in this life, our fears, and when we're alone. See our faith in you, shaky and incomplete as it may be. Accept us into your heart and love us too. Teach us to have hope in the midst of pain and sorrow. Teach us to trust in the midst of doubt. Teach us to be confident in the midst of insecurity. Help us to know that you are with us in all of our sufferings and that you call us to share eternal life and infinite joy with you in your kingdom. Give us hope, O oh Lord, of compassion for all our loved ones who also are in agony and who pass from this life. Take them to yourself, O oh Jesus, on the cross so that one day we too may be with you in paradise. Lord, do 
it is increasingly difficult for Jesus to breathe. He tried to push himself up with his legs and lean back for a breath of air to relieve his burning lungs. But the pain from the thorns driven deep into his head seemed to concentrate at a point right behind his eyes. Every movement of his head is in agony. He sags back down and gazes at all who have come to support him in this, his final hour, all four of them. One his mother, next to her his mother's sister, a woman of Magdala, and one, only one, of his twelve disciples. He looks at his disciple and then to his mother and says, Woman, behold your son. And to each of us, he says, Behold your mother. (coughs) Oh, Mary, what sorrow was yours as you held the child you carried, the infant you nursed, the little one you taught and cared for. You see him now, a man in the prime of his life. But does a mother ever see her child grown up and independent of them? Ever without need of their help, guidance, comfort, or protection? You see your heart nailed to that cross. You cannot speak. Your eyes filled with tears and are looking to him intently. And you see the agony through the hot, salt tears streaming down your face. He pulls himself up to speak, and you see the pain in his face, and he looks down on your face, so drawn and pale with shock and sorrow. John has arms around your shoulders and holds your hand, but you feel no comfort, only the agony of your son. You gasp with love in your eyes, and your son acknowledges that he loves you as his mother and appoints you to be the mother of John and of the whole church. You behold your son at his greatest moment, giving himself completely in love. And you behold John, who clutches you tightly to himself. He is your son now. We are all your sons and daughters. Clutch us tightly to yourself. O Mary, our mother.
Storm clouds are building now on the western horizon. A cool breeze stirs a dust eddy through the milling mob below. Though soon there will be rain, the crowd seems to be in a festive mood. After all, at sundown, it will be Passover holiday. A man in the group somewhere to your right yells out in a laughing way, Well, <laughs> you saved yourself. Now, why don't you save us? They don't understand. His heart aches that he has failed them. He tried. They turn away. They simply turn away. Three years of teaching compassion, faith, and love has come to this, him hanging on a cross. He showed them the way, and they turned their backs. He is devastated with the rejection of his ministry, and the hollowness of it all grips his very soul. And he cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Oh, my Jesus, your agony is now almost unbearable as you hang on the rough wood of the cross. Each gasp for air is an agony in itself as you feel your lungs collapsing under your weight, pulling on your extended arms. And yet, O oh Jesus, your physical agony is not the worst of it all. You feel deserted. You feel abandoned. Where are the lepers you once cleansed? Where is the blind man now sighted by your healing touch? Where are the twelve, those with whom you lived and whom you taught? Where are your closest friends? Where are the crowds who acclaimed you son of David and laid down palm branches before you? Their hosanna shouts have been replaced by the mournful sounds of Calvary. Only your mother and your beloved disciple and the women are there to let you know that they share in your pain. You pray the psalm you learned as a child and it is fulfilled in you. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You endure the pain, loneliness, and agony of every person who would ever live. You consecrate their suffering and ours as well. You consecrate them and offer them to God who seems to have abandoned you. And yet you know that he is really not far off, only hidden. Your knowledge of his love and for us all sustain you. One lonely night, Mary was singing. One lonely night, long ago. One lonely night, no bells were ringing. lay sleeping one lonely night long ago one lonely night Joseph stood weeping one lonely night long ago One lonely 
It is increasingly hard for Jesus to speak now. His tongue is swollen and has lost all feeling. It seems not even to be part of him. His lips are raw and blistered. His mouth tastes only of dust and ash. His throat is parched. He aches for water, but there is a deeper ache. Rather, he yearns for the souls of each one of us to forgive us, to take us to himself. He has prayed his Father's will and not his own be done. He longs to send the Spirit to us to complete his work, but his mouth is so dry that the only thing he can say is, I thirst. My Jesus, Lord, you are the fountain of living water. You are the spring of life, the torrent of life-giving water. But your thirst is more than for liquid of life. You thirst for souls. You thirst for our salvation, and it is your love for us that you feel more keenly than the dryness of your mouth. My Jesus, suffering Savior, you thirst for me. You are willing to endure a thousand crucifixions for me, such is your love. Though you thirst terribly, you know my thirst is more serious, my thirst for God, for meaning, for faith in you. And thirsty though you be, you long to give yourself for me to quench my thirst. Between the earth and blackened sky Suspended on a cross to die The Savior bows his head and cries I thirst Is this the wedding guest who died? And turn the water into wine The one who calls himself the vine I thirst I thirst he cries upon the tree I thirst he cries in Oh 
think it's still good. The soldiers sent to keep order are whiling away the time until they can get this over and go home. They are pitching dice. To the high roller will go everything Jesus owns, only his cloak. He has given us everything that is dear to him, his mother. Now he has nothing left except his being, his very essence, his life. He has done all that he can do. Through lips cracked and bloodied by the almost total dehydration of his body, he utters, Father, Abba, into your hands I commend my spirit. O oh, divine Jesus, you speak your Father's name. You call him Abba. Like a child's first words are Papa or Mama. Your last words express the same love, the trust, the closeness. God is not fierce or distant or vengeful. To you, he is Abba. You know of his power, his awesome might, which created out of nothing is everything. You know the secret of the universe, the secret of that power. And that power is love itself. It is to that love that you now give over your mortal life, your human spirit. Oh, Jesus, help us to give our lives over to the power of that same love so that we may join with all the angels, with all the saints and faithful who say, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit.
His voice is now little more than a hoarse whisper. His sight is gone. The weight pulling on his lower back has damaged his spinal cord to a point where his lower body is totally numb and his legs will no longer support any part of his weight. The muscles and tendons of his shoulders can no longer hold his head upright. As his head pitches forward and down, his throat closes, trapping what little breath he has left, and the entire weight of his torso is suspended from his arms and across his chest. The cartilage binding his bones together cannot bear this tension, and it begins to pull apart. As his rib cage fails, his lungs collapse. With the last breath in his body, he gasps, It is finished! And then, and then, he was still. It is complete now, Lord Jesus. The task you were sent to do, your mission is over. Your suffering done, you bow your head in death. You have lived your life and paid the price, and now your work is done. But not for your mother. She must now once more hold you in her arms. Oh my Jesus, how cruel my sins for her and for her son. What thoughts are hers as tears fall upon your bloody cheek? A sword is piercing her now in her heart, and she must say goodbye. But her work is not finished yet, neither is ours. It has only begun. Your mission we take up of bringing all the nations the good news of your redeeming love, your Son, Jesus Christ. And you have spoken words of life and love. May we become your words to all. May we, your body, be. May your last words become our first. Use us to do your work. Fill your world with love, O Lord, and through the caring of our lives. And when our work is done, take us to yourself, where there will be no more sorrow, no more pain, no more death.